Hi, I'm Claire and today I'm going to be reacting to the Booktube SFF Awards shortlist. This is the second one of our Booktube SFF Babbles topics, so it is meant to encourage conversation. So please, 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 if you have any thoughts about the shortlist, any books that you've read or that you want to read, let me know in the comments below. And if you've made your own video or a blog post or posted on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, please do let me know about that as well. Send me a link. I would love to see what everyone thinks. For this shortlist, there are a lot of books that I haven't read. So one thing that I thought would be fun to do is to kind of go through it in the style of a five star prediction sort of video and say if I think I'm gonna like the thing or not. As you probably know by now, it's been on the channel a lot. I am a judge for the Booktube SFF Awards this year. So I have three categories that I'm definitely going to be reading every book for. And those categories are best science fiction, best fantasy and best short fiction. And then for the other categories there are things that I'm interested in reading but I'm not going to try and like complete any of the other categories maybe. So first up we have Best Fantasy and the nominees for that are Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, The Solace Sea by Erin Morgenstern, I'm yeah, you can see it's a library copy. It's got the, the plastic on it. So hopefully it's not going to be too annoying to show you my library copies. And then the other one, I'm not sure if you could see, but the table there was shaking just from me picking it up. And that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I said in my recommendation video that I hope this would make it on the shortlist because it would give me like a deadline to read it. And that oh, it's a big book, but it's going to be fine. I'm going to be really happy if it gets picked. I did not realize quite how big this book is. It's like obscuring my head. It's so large. I am still really excited that I have a deadline to read this and that I'm going to have to read it. I got the physical copy from the library because I thought if there's a map or character names or whatever, I'm going to want to have a physical copy as well. But I'm going to listen to the audiobook. I love epic fantasy on audiobook. This has queens and dragon riders and dragons and I'm really, really excited to read it. I think I'm going to love it. Genuinely think this is going to be like a four or a five star read because ladies and dragons, again, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be like a really immersive world and I'm very excited for that but yeah I'm going to start with this one pretty soon uh, so that I can get through it in the two months allocated. Now Gods of Jade and Shadow is a book that I've been anticipating since way before its release. I bought it as soon as it came out still haven't read it. I am pre-filming this uh, and the day I'm filming this I'm going to start this after I've done this batch of recording because it is the end of February right now as I'm recording and this is on my February TBR. Patreon pick came up in my Read for Initiative game earlier this month. My patrons picked this. I'm very, very excited for it. I've read Sylvia Moreno Garcia before. I love her writing style. I especially love the writing she does around mythology and world building. There was some of that in her vampire novel, whose title completely escapes me right now. I really love that. And this is about a young woman who, who ends up having to help the Mayan god of the underworld reclaim his throne. So I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of mythology. Really excited. I am expecting this to be a solid five star. I'm going to be surprised if it's not because I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing. So yeah, I'm expecting this to be great and I can't wait to start it later today. Now, The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I'm not surprised that it made the shortlist at all because it's been so buzzy on booktube. So many people have read it and like talked about it and loved it. But the thing that slightly worries me about it is that I don't actually know what this is about. I've seen so many people haul it, be so excited about the fact that it had arrived, do reading vlogs where they read it, but I'm not sure I know what it actually is about. So many people, when they talk about this book, they talk about how they love Erin Morgenstern's writing, they love The Night Circus, and I have not read The Night Circus. I know I'm like the last person on earth not to have read that because so many people, when they talk about this, they talk about how much they love this other book I haven't read and this author's writing based on this other book I haven't read. 
Like, I still have no idea whether I'm gonna like it or not. And honestly, the emphasis on the writing style and the prose in people's discussions about this makes me worry that I'm not gonna like it so much, because I usually prefer fairly plotty books where a bunch of stuff happens, as opposed to books that are maybe a little slower paced, where the writing is beautiful. Like, I don't know what that says about me, but that's my usual preference, so... I'm thinking this might be more of a three or four star, I'm not sure, and I have no idea what it's about. Again, like, sometimes you have books that are very buzzy that you know what they're about because everyone's talking about them, like Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, I know what that's about, even though I haven't read it and I'm not interested in reading it because I know what it's about because people have talked about that, but this I have no idea, so <laughs> we'll have to see, but I hope that I like it better than I think I will. Next up we've got science fiction and the nominees for that are Recursion by Blake Crouch, A Memory Called Empire by RKD Martin, and Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mio. Now I read Gideon late last year, really really loved it. I read it on audio but I think I might uh, either listen to it again or like skim a little again from this book now that I know kind of the twist at the end and who done it and all of that. Uh, this is the Lesbian Necromancers in Space book. I mean I really enjoyed this, I love that it had a nice epic feel to it, even though it's sci-fi it kind of feels almost like epic fantasy because of the houses and all the characters and stuff, so I think I might want to re-read this or check out at least the introduction of all the characters now that I know who they all are again. But the long and short of it is I really enjoyed this and I suspect that if I reread it again I will like it even more now that I have a better grasp on the characters and the world. For Memory Called Empire I was really hyped about it before it came out, I got it as soon as it came out, started reading it and then got super distracted, none of the book's fault, really was enjoying it, but like sometimes when there's too much happening and my head is like in so many different directions I have a tendency to put books down even that I enjoy and then struggle to pick them back up again, so this is what happened with memory and I'm really really excited to have a deadline to actually go back to it, start it again from the beginning because it was months and months ago, and then actually read through it. I really enjoyed what I was reading of this, so I'm expecting this is going to be a five star because this is the kind of sci-fi that I love. It's not all about the science and how something is achieved, it's about how the society functions in the future, and that is what I love. And then we've got Recursion by Blake Crouch, and this is another book that I knew nothing about before it came up as a finalist in the Booktube SFF Awards. In fact, when I saw the cover for this book, I thought it was a sequel to Dark Matter, Blake Crouch's previous book, because they've been packaged in a similar way, like sometimes publishers will do this and package all of the books from one author in a way that like they look like they belong together, and because there was that I thought it was a sequel, but it's not, it's a standalone, which I very much appreciate for the Booktube SFF Awards. I just have no idea what it's about, I know that many people on Booktube love this, I had a little look at the back of the book before I started filming, and it's got some really interesting stuff going on about memory and an epidemic that ravages this world where people are getting memories that they never actually experienced and it is messing with their minds. I am not sure if I'm going to like this, honestly. This kind of near future hard sci-fi where bad things happen, you know, in part because of technology, it's like Black Mirror-esque thing. Honestly, this kind of story often struggles to keep my interest because it often can feel like, you know, in order to read this, like, really smart intellectual thing, you have to, like, have a lot of really bad feelings of hopelessness about the future and this idea that, you know, in the future there's going to be so much oppression and we're going to be sad all the time. I have no idea if this book is like that at all or not, it's just that I've seen this author's work compared to things like Black Mirror before, the way that people talk about it, about it being like, horrifying and creepy. 
it might work super, super, super well for me, or it might really fail for me. Like, I feel like this is either going to be a five star or a two star, and there's going to be no middle ground. This is my prediction for this book, mostly because this kind of subgenre is often very Marmite for me. I'm gonna either love it or hate it. Next up, we have the best debut category, and for this one, we've got two repeats. Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir and A Memory Called Empire by R.K.D. Martin. The third book in the category is The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. I don't have a copy to show you uh, because I don't own the book. I've looked for it at my local library and it wasn't there, but I need to look around on Scribd and see if I can find an audiobook somewhere. I am tentatively thinking I might read that one because I've already got two of the books from the category and I'm gonna be reading them anyway already for science fiction so I might as well be reading the third one and having another full category that's my thinking but I need to make sure that I don't get too competitive with myself and don't make myself you know read this book if I don't think I'm gonna enjoy it, or if it's difficult to get my hands on, or if there's no time, that kind of thing. This is kind of contingent. I might read it, I might not. But if I do decide to read it, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it or not, honestly. Some of my friends have loved this book, some of them haven't so much, but even the people that loved it have said that it's kind of slow paced and the writing is beautiful, but like it's kind of takes its time to get to the point and it's a slower start. So that kind of thing, I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy. People have also said that though about Uprooted and Spinning Silver and that's not really the experience I felt reading those books. I didn't think that the start was slow or whatever. So maybe I think I don't like it, but actually I struggle to recognize it. I don't know. Anyway, the 10,000 Doors of January goes on the list to maybe read once I've finished all the other books ones. Now let's talk about best YA and best middle grade because those are two categories that I'm not judging and they are also the two categories where A there was a tie so they have four books each and B there are some books that are next in series so there's in fact more than four in each to read so Basically, what I'm saying is I'm probably not going to read any of the Y and middle grade books, not because I'm not interested in them, but because two months is going to go by faster than I think it will. I'm really bad at gauging time and how much time I have to do things. So I'm going to say straight away, I don't want to commit to reading these books because there are or more of them. If once I read one or two, I'm going to start thinking to myself, I could complete the category to read all of them. And that way lies a lot of stress. So I'm not going to be reading The Wicked King by Holly Black, Starside by Brandon Sanderson, Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, The Gilded Wolves by Roshini Chokchi, which is the YA shortlist. I'm interested in The Gilded Wolves and in Sorcery of Thorns. I might pick them up at some point. I do have them on script as audiobooks. So once I finished with the whole shortlist that I do have to read, these are the next things that I'm interested in reading. But I don't want to commit to the Wicked King series by Holly Black or Starside by Brennan Sanderson. I found Brennan Sanderson's fiction to be really hit and miss for me. I really liked Mistborn and, and I really did not get along with the Stormlight Archive. I'm definitely not going to commit to a new series from him. And then in middle grade, we have Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab, Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, Dead Voices by Catherine Arden, and Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. And those I don't even know which ones are sequels in series. I did try to read Dragon Pearl last year and got very anxious very quickly about this main character who is a child and in such a dangerous situation making so many decisions that I'm like, no, I want to protect you from making these decisions, which is not about the book. Like, that's not a book problem, that's a me problem. I clearly at some point have become an old fogey who can't read a middle grade book about a kid having adventures in space without, like, really hyperventilating and wanting to, like, give her a hug and make her soup. So... <laughs> I might try that book again at some point when I'm less stressed out and my mental health is doing better than it was last year when I started reading it. But I'm not going to commit to reading it for the awards because, you know, the awards in themselves are 
really, really, really fun, but also having bookish reading homework is a little stressful for me, so I don't want to add to that. And the final category is Best Short Fiction, which is another one I'm judging, so I'm going to be reading all three of these books. We've got The Test by Sylvain Novell, To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers, and This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a category that I'm kind of excited about but also kind of nervous about because I read To Be Taught If Fortunate and loved it. I read it last year when it came out. I already know this is a five star read for me. This book does a thing at the end that I don't usually like but it managed to make it work and I really really enjoy it. But the other two books in the category that I haven't read yet, This Is How You Lose a Time War and The Test, I am somewhat ambivalent about. This Is How You Lose a Time War is one of those books that I've heard is very, very weird, which I don't have a problem with at all. But I've also heard that it's very um, lush prose and that there's not like as much plot, that it's kind of slow paced and it's all about the prose. Again, this is the same worry that I have about the Starless Sea and about 10,000 Doors of January. Is this going to be something that I'm going to like or not? I'm going to go ahead and predict that this might be a three or four star for me, but I don't think it's going to be a five star for me because I think the things that it chooses to do, even if it does them really, really well, they're not my favorite tropes. So I hope I'm wrong about this because it's been so hyped and I'm assuming it's going to be on the shortlist for the Hugos because it's already been on the shortlist for the Nebula and more awards than that so I'm assuming we're going to be talking about this one more in the coming months and I would like it if I you know was really enthusiastic about it but we'll have to see I'm starting this a little bit worried that it's not going to be my cup of tea but again I hope I'm wrong and finally we have the test by Sylvain Novell they didn't have a copy at my local library but I do have an audiobook of it through audible so I'm fine for um, actually reading the book what I am worried about is I don't think I'm gonna like this honestly I think this book is gonna make me mad first up this is another book that I've heard described as a black mirror episode and how it's chilling because it's like horrifying in a very, you know, near future politics that might happen kind of way. First up, that's just not a thing that I enjoy in books very often. It needs to be done right for me to enjoy it and I'm very picky about it. So that's that's one thing that immediately I'm like worried that I'm not gonna like it as much as everybody else has loved it. The other thing is, this is a book about the UK citizenship test written by somebody who is Canadian, doesn't live in the UK, as far as I'm aware hasn't done the UK citizenship test because I feel like if he had done it, we would have heard about it in the marketing for this book. And you know, this is a subject that is very close to my heart because I've done the UK citizenship test, I've gotten my citizenship, I know if you've read it, you're probably watching this going like, Claire, it's not about the actual citizenship test. It's about like making this guy decide if somebody has to die or something. I am bet it's got some like twists where the test isn't actually questions about knowing UK knowledge, but in fact, like a test of morality, like the trolley problem, but real, you know, where you have to decide whether you're gonna like kill one person or a bunch of people or hey, like papers please, basically. I'm assuming it's going to kind of go in that direction where, you know, the test that this guy is going to have in order to gain UK citizenship is going to be him doing horrible things to other people. Maybe I'm wrong, but if that's what it is, I feel like that's going to be really, really difficult to make me like it. And also going back to what I was just saying, like this is an experience that I had to go through that was pretty all right for me to go through because I'm educated and middle class and like a lot of the things that were on the test weren't too difficult for me to like learn by heart ahead of time and stuff. But a lot of people really struggle coming to live in the UK and like, Literally two days ago, we had the news that we have a new point system that's going to like make it super difficult for anybody to come in the UK. You know, we've had discussions about Brexit and immigration and all of that, like up the wazoo for years. And it's been really difficult to deal with and really stressful and really like anxiety inducing. And, you know, if you're watching from the US, maybe you don't get it with the 
Brexit thing, but I'm sure you can, like, get how I feel about anxiety about politics, given that, like, you have an election cycle that lasts a million years. I don't know. Again, it might surprise me. I might love it. I hope I love it. But I'm assuming it's gonna make me mad. I'm assuming this one is going to be a low rating for me. I'd rather assume that it's gonna make me mad and then be pleasantly surprised rather than really get my hopes up about it and then it does something that I don't like. I've never read anything else by Sylvain Nevel, so I have nothing to go on except for the fact that, like, this is a subject that feels touchy and personal for me and I don't feel like I can trust people to write about it in a science fiction, black mirror, near future thriller, aren't people horrible sort of way. Yeah, I mean I just hope that I'm wrong because if I'm not wrong then I don't really want to read it and I do have to read it. So there we go. That ended on a positive, positive note. Look, it's one short book and I'm mostly really, really excited about all the reading that I'm going to do for the BookTube SFF Awards. I'm really excited to go back to this video after I've read all of the books and tell you if I was right or wrong about my thoughts on these books. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're planning on reading any of these books for the BookTube SFF Awards or maybe all of them. Let me know if you agree or disagree disagree on like how I might feel about these books. If you have been following the channel for a while and you know my reading taste and you feel like actually I'm super wrong about one or more of these books, please let me know. I mean obviously no spoilers, which I'm assuming you wouldn't do anyway, but do tell me how you feel in the comments. I'm really really curious to know what everybody thinks about our shortlist. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video on screen right now. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button that's on my face for a new video from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.